Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard games video. Today we're taking a look at a blue-green ramp deck featuring the full playset of Awaken the Woods as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. This new mythic rare sorcery from the Brothers War costs X and double green to create X11 green forest dried land creature tokens. It's a pretty strange concept, but if you're familiar with dried arbor from older formats, it essentially makes X of those 1-1 tokens. They still count as creatures, so they do suffer from summoning sickness, but they're also lands, so they get to tap for mana and more importantly if they can enable some landfall synergies which could be quite powerful sadly most of the landfall cards rotated out of standard but we still have a pretty good one left in the form of tatiova steward of tides double green and blue for a 3-3 a legendary merfolk druid saying a land creatures we control have flying so that also applies to the 1-1 drides which will now fly and then whenever a land enters a battlefield under our control if we control seven or more lands up to one target land we control becomes a 3-3 elemental creature with with haste and it's still a land so if we cast awaken the woods with tantio vine play we get to upgrade all our 1-1 drives into 3-3 drives they have flying thanks to tantiova and they also gain haste so we can attack with them right away and potentially present a lethal out of nowhere and then if we also happen to have a Jinga Taxis in play, things get even more crazy as we now get to double up on Awaken the Woods and then assuredly have enough creatures to attack for the win. So that's the goal of the deck. We're also playing four copies of the new Titania's Command, a six mana sorcery that lets us choose two modes between exiling target player's graveyard and gaining one life for each card exiled this way. Doesn't come up very often. We can also search our library for up to two land cards and put them on the battlefield tapped. So it's not restricted to just getting basic lands, which means we can also fetch some of our one-off utility lands with it and that will keep ramping even more. We can also decide to make a pair of 2-2 green bear creature tokens and finally we can also put two plus one plus one counters on each creature we control. So even on an empty board we can choose the bear mode and the plus one counters and then we'll be left with a pair of 4-4 bear tokens but if we already have a bit of a board presence maybe we had some 1-1 one -one tokens from Awaken the Woods then those plus one counters will get even better. And our one-off utility lands that we can search up include a plaza of heroes, which can maybe help protect Tatiova. We've got a blast zone, which can help destroy certain permanents with the same mana value. And then we also have an Argoth Sanctum of Nature, which can come into play untapped if we control Tatiova. And then for four mana, we can tap it to generate a 2-2 green bear creature token, as well as milling three cards can only be used at sorcery speed. So that's a great tool in the more controlling matchups where we expect to face a lot of sweeper effects. And then we also have two copies of Broker's Hideout as a fetch land that, in addition to gaining one life, can maybe give us two landfall triggers for Tatiova, so we can animate two of our lands right away. And Titania's Command is also quite nice to copy with Jenkitaxius, as you can imagine, although you will be locked into the same modes that you chose, so usually going for bears and plus one counters is the way to go. Then looking at the rest of our deck, we've got the full set of Fading Hope as cheap interaction against creature matchups, can also maybe save our own creature from removal and replay it. At 2 mana we've got the full set of Azusa's Many Journeys to play an additional land this turn, so that's why we're playing a 28 lands total, which is a lot, but that way we're more likely to be able to get value from our Many Journeys and start ramping. Then it also gains 3 life and eventually transforms into a 3-3 creature, which we can maybe reconfigure a reality chip onto. 2 mana 04 lets us take a look at the top card of our library at any time, and if we reconfigure it for 2 in a blue, it will be attached as an equipment to one of our creatures, and then we can play lands and cast spells from the top of our library, so that's a great way to take over the late game. And then we're also packing four copies of a joint exploration, which can be cast as a two mana instant to scry to and then draw a card. But we can also kick it for an additional green mana, in which case it's three total. And then we can also put a land card from our hand onto the battlefield. It's going to be untapped, so we can still maybe use that mana for something else, like an instant speed fading hope. Even in the opponent's turn, could also enable Tatiova at instant speed to present a surprise 3 3 blocker. So it has a few interesting applications. And the scry is also useful if we have a reality chip in play, as we can see that we want to put some cards on the bottom and then we've got our full set of Awaken the Woods, which we can also cast for X equals 1 or 2 early on just to help us ramp. 
And then Awaken the Woods also pairs quite nicely with Topiary Stomper, a 3-mana 4-4 with Vigilance, which when it enters the battlefield lets us search our library for a basic land and put it on the battlefield tapped, but the Stomper can only attack and block as soon as we have 7 or more lands in play, so it usually takes a while for the Stomper to become an active creature, but with Awaken the Woods making Forest Dryads, which also count as lands, we can speed up that process significantly and start attacking a lot sooner. And then we've uh, covered all the spells in our deck, we've got our utility lands, and then a few more pieces of mana fixing with Cascade and Yavimaya Coast, plenty of basics to search up, and then Soaring City and Boseju offer additional interaction. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, our hand's not perfect, but I think it's still a keep. And then I'm gonna hang on to Cascade as something we can put in play with Azusa's Many Journeys in case we need to keep up Fading Hope in the same turn. Let's see what our opponent's up to. Black, green. So we're off to a decent start with Many Journeys into Stomper for ramp. And then Reality Chip, a good mana sink to provide extra card advantage. And then Jin will be a nice one as well. Get a forest, I think. And then next turn, play and reconfigure. Maybe play a land of the top. Shake down heavy points towards a potential fight rigging combo deck. And we just drew an answer in Boseju. So let's play a reality chip, see what's on top. A coast. So I can reconfigure, play a land of the top, and then let's see. This would no longer be a creature, so I don't think we get the discounts to channel this for single green, but I think it's still worth it. So yeah, we won't be able to channel on a potential fight rigging, so one turn where the opponent can go off, and they actually had it. So, we'll see what they can cast for free here. Flash Gorger 7-5. Yeah, that's pretty good. Although we could use Boseju to destroy the Flash Gorger. It's going to cost us 7 life. So, let's play some things for free while we can. And then... Play a Blast soon. And then we could channel Boseju and then keep the opponents drawing cards with a shakedown heavy, I guess is fine. And eventually take over with a Jin. So no attacks. And then we can respond to the plus one counter. Could double block Shakedown Heavy 2 now. And then we need Reality Chip to take over the late game. Heavy attacks. And uh, yeah, trading for it is probably fine. Question is whether we triple block to play around instant speed removal. And that may be worth it, although it does mean having to reconfigure Reality Chip again. I might just play Jin next turn anyways. Opponent did have a Terra Sunder, so glad we triple blocked. Okay, so we survived the early fight rigging combo. And we've got a Tatiova coming up. So we don't have a creature to reconfigure onto, so happy to play Jin, And then we'll hang on to Hideout until after we play Tatiova. Alright, cut down deals with a reality chip. So, could have tapped my mana a little bit better to keep blue to replay another chip if needed. That's fine. Titan of Industry is not bad. Could have also destroyed an artifact like Reality Chip. So I guess I'm glad I didn't play it now. 
So our opponent's got a large reach creature. And then now I could play reality chip first, see what's on top. Although it will waste the uh, gin ability, but that's fine. Alright, Awaken the Woods coming up. That's the combo with Tatiova, so I don't necessarily want to shuffle with Broker's Hideout. So, I think we just play Tatiova and pass. And then next turn cast a big Awaken. And I could reconfigure onto Jin as well here if I'd like. Okay, let's pass. So next turn I can awaken for how much? Seven. Gix is fine. Take 13. And then seven times three is 21, so that would be lethal. But we even get to copy it with Jin, so it's going to be more than uh, 7 times 3. Just animate all the 1 ones we just got. Have to keep track of which ones we've already targeted. And they will also gain haste so they can attack right away. And then I don't think we've targeted the first one yet. There's another Awaken for X equals 7 on the stack. Opponent had the cutdown, which gets countered by Jin. And they also had a Terra Sunder, fair enough. So now our creatures lose flying. But there's still 3-3s three with haste, so if we attack with all, I think we still got it. And our opponent explodes. Epic game here against Black Green Fight Rigging. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and seems acceptable. Turn to reality chip into... I guess we can't quite play Stomper on 3, but once we play Tatiova or Plaza, we'll make green for Stomper as well. And a teething Wormlet from the opponents. Cascade should help, so now we can play an early Stomper. Maybe wait on Tatiova until a little bit later. Cascade on top. So, yeah, could shuffle that away with Stomper. That's no big deal. And get a forest. Okay, Titania's command coming up, which we're not too far from casting. Opponent with Automaton into a Steel Seraph now, so they're going to be able to give the team flying. That's a potential concern until Tatiova turns our lands into 3-3s. Three so take 3. And another reality chip on top. So if I play Kicked's Joint Exploration, we can maybe put that on the bottom and find something more exciting to play right now. If I just play Exploration without Kicker, I can still play Tatiova afterwards. Is that maybe preferred? If I find a land, then I can still do both. So I think the upside's high enough. There's an island, so that'll do. Play Tatiova. And then next turn I could awaken for X equals 5. And make a bunch of 3-3 three, three flyers. Amalgam grows automaton. Wormlet gains death touch now as well. So they can give automaton flying and just attack with a wormlet on the ground. So we're taking a significant hit. So next turn has to be the turn where we kind of stabilize. If they have removal for Tatiova, or Lance will lose flying and we probably die. Surprised the Wormlet did not attack there. So, yeah, I think we just play Soaring City, cast Awaken for the max amount. Could also Titania's Commands, which could search for some lands, put counters on the team. 
think awaken is going to be better for us. And then x equals 5. Not quite enough to attack for lethal here, but uh, presents a nice army. And then next turn, Titanius Command could be a way to cross the finish line. Stomper gets to attack, maybe trade for Wormlets. Maybe one or two of them can attack. I'll send in one land. So if they remove Tatiova and play another artifact, we're dead to Automaton plus Seraph. Simeon, that's two plus one counters. Plus one more on Automaton. So if their last card is removal for Tatiova, it's game. If not, Titanius Command should be enough. Goes for Lifelink. Fair enough. So, can... Uh, Double block automaton if we'd like. Take five. And then now we have a ton of options, but plus one counters on the team. Sounds good enough. And I made a land first. And smash. All right, sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play, and seems fine. Many journeys and stomper for early acceleration. And then a Titanius command, a perfect curve topper. Up against a red aggro. So many journeys gaining life also helps. And then double stomper. They're also quite good in multiples. Red green instead. Probably more concerning than just mono red, since they might be able to outsize or 4 4. And Amalgama, a great example. So, if I play Stomper now, next turn we can maybe enable it already. So, it seems worthwhile. And get an island. Stormseeker, all right, opponent with a perfect 1-2-3 curve. So we're under a ton of pressure. Reality chip, not exactly what the doctor ordered. So what's the move here? I can play Stomper and then cast Exploration without Kicker, hoping to find a land. And then I'll be able to enable both Stompers with it. And then I want to play Stomper first so that I don't mess up the Scry. I need to land in the top two. There it is. Don't think I need exploration afterwards. Okay, Stomper's online. Hit for four, and now we've got our defenses set up at least. And maybe next turn command can put counters on Stomper as well. Bushwhack to get a land. So they're not interested in fighting. If we draw another land, I can even play a Reality Chip before playing Titanius Command. Simulacrum could put counters on Amalgam, which threatens to become a 15-15 Golem token. Pretty happy to block if it attacks, or opponent hangs back. And Awaken the Woods, also an interesting draw. I think I should still go for Titanius Command right now. And then we get a nice attack in with Topiary Stomper. Question is whether to search up two lands or to make two bear tokens for extra board presence. If we get the lands, then we can cast a bigger awaken and have more mana to go off with the reality chip. Although making two extra four fours could be good enough on this board. So that's what I'm going for. 
and smash. Likeness has to hang back. Opponent's trading away the Amalgam, that's good. So yeah, we're definitely in a good spot now. Flying creature could still be threatening. Opponent might have a Sheevan Devastator in their deck, but we're outsizing them on the ground now. There's a Radass Firebrand. Not too big of a concern, times two. So no attacks this turn. And then could cast a big Awaken, or we could play Reality Chip and see what's next. So I'll reconfigure onto the likeness. Play a land. And Exploration we can cast, so let's attack with definitely the Stomper. They can double block with Firebrand. If I attack with all what happens. They double block. I shouldn't be in any danger of dying on the way back, so yeah, let's smash. Opponent takes it, so I think they're giving up here. All right, sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Hand is probably a keep. Fading hope for early interaction. Stomper to ramp towards Awaken the Woods. And then Awaken also a good way to enable Stomper ahead of schedule. Could cast a turn to Exploration. Although I might hold off to Plate Kicked. Opponent on a band deck with a slow start. Okay, I think I'm okay playing Buseju, so I save myself one damage. Get an island. And then if I awaken for X equals 3 next turn, Stomper could attack. Opponent just cycling a union. So they could be a control deck with a couple sweepers, which makes me less interested in casting an Awaken right now. And then instead, if I play a land, cast Joint Exploration Kicked, we still won't quite be able to attack with Stomper unless we draw into, let's say, Azusa's Many Journeys. So I guess we'll give it a shot main phase here. Titania's Command seems too good to pass up, so keep that on top. And then can put Argoth in play. And pass. So now Titanius Command could make bear tokens and put counters on the team. So we also grow Stomper. Could also awaken the woods first, but again, there's a concern of a sweeper. So maybe going Titanius Command to find two lands is the safest move in the face of a board wipe. Tatiova, okay. So now with Tatiova, Awaken the Woods threatens to present lethal. I think I still like Titanius Command to um, and get two lands. And then can keep up Fading Hope to maybe bounce my own Stomper. And then we can make a couple bears to maybe force a board wipe already. And we'll get Blast soon. And then sure I'll get a hideout. Okay, so hit for four. And then we can cast Satyova plus a relatively large Awaken in the same turn. And we also have Plaza to protect Tatiova. And with a man advantage here to potentially do multiple things in the same turn. Whereas the opponent maybe only gets to cast one spell. So if her opponent goes for a depopulate, I think I'm happy bouncing Stomper back to a hand. Lay down arms. Yeah, that also counts. And then a Cascade will keep on top, since it's an extra land for Tatiova and Awaken the Woods. So do I have enough mana to play Tatiova, play a land, play Stomper, and still keep up Plaza? 
Uh, I guess if I don't attack with my creature lands, in that case, do I still bother animating my land? Maybe I'm better off not to. So let's see if Stomper resolves. It does. Because I also don't want to animate all my lands and have our opponents cast a board wipe to get rid of them. So, let's start by attacking. And then I think the plan is Tatiova after playing a land, which is a bit of a strange sequence. Keep up Plaza, and then kind of hope they tap out for a board wipe, protect Tatiova with Plaza, untap, awaken, and uh, that should be pretty effective. All right, opponent's going to dissipate, that's too bad. Counters our entire game plan. Can still level a blast zone here. As our opponent gains more life. Can still activate our Argoth to keep making better tokens. Jengitaxis could also be great in this matchup, although resolving it might be tricky. So counters on blast soon. And another Awaken the Woods. Alright, now I guess I don't feel as bad if there's a Sweeper in our future. Can tap out all the way, or keep two mana untapped in case of a MIG disappear. I think we do it for the max amount, so... That would be X equals 9. Joint Exploration's fine. So next turn, opponent likely to tap out for a board wipe. Either depopulate or maybe farewell. And then we can cast another one. And there's farewell. Alright, X equals 9 it is. Hope they don't have another sweeper. If they do, we still have Argoth. But then we're really hoping for a juicy top deck. Deluge to go digging. And let's attack for 9. Argoth, we have to activate main phase. Milled uh, second Tatiova, so there's only one left in the deck. I guess keeping a land in hand for that reason still makes sense. Opponent passes, and a Titania's Command could be lethal if it resolves, although that's going to be a bit of a challenge. So I think I cast it before activating Argoth, even though we miss out on the counters in case our opponent has a conditional counter spell, and then can play the land first, although we can always tap our Dryads for mana if needed. So plus one counters, and then do I search up two lands, or do I make more bears? Probably doesn't matter. Because if this resolves, our opponent's in trouble. But uh, two lands may be better in case there is a board wipe, and this, for some reason, isn't enough. Opponent dissipates. Not too surprising. Okay, so we'll attack and then make another bear. And hope uh, we can get her over the course of two turns. Soul partition the token. Opponent takes 9. And there's another bear. Okay, so we have lethal on board. Can our opponent find a sweeper? Flashback Deluge. That's good news for us. So best they can do is maybe deal with a bear token. Still take 9. So another Titanius command would be lethal. Got some other good top decks. And there's laydown arms on our bear. Maybe it was worth it to bounce to get to scry one and improve my next draw step. And uh, Cascade, not the best one. So yeah, opponent could still get back into it if they have a board wipe. And with uh, Memory Deluge they're pretty likely to have found one, but we'll keep making bears. Next card down would have been a Topiary Stomper, so that wouldn't have helped. 
Okay. Argoth is still going to be pretty annoying with her opponent at 2 life for them to deal with. And I don't think they're running Field of Ruin or the new Demolition Field in a 3 color deck. Actually, could be a 4 color deck for all we know. Union to gain some life back. Not quite enough to survive. And our opponent explodes. Yeah, they couldn't find another board wipe in time. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and seems fine. Early Fading Hope, Exploration and Stomper for Ramp. Ideally pick up another green source. If not, we can use Plaza to play Tatiova and then play Stomper. Wouldn't consider, so could be a Counterspell deck, which is not our favorite. Although if we resolve an early Tatiova, we can just win by hitting our land drops. So, maybe playing an exploration here is fine. I'll keep both lands. And then instead of playing into a 2 mana counter, I think we play Kicked Exploration instead. And then next turn it's going to be easier to maybe double spell. Okay, Gurgling Anointer, so opponent a blue-black draw 2 deck. So I can play Exploration Kicked. Probably should have played a different land, so I could have cast Fading Hope without taking damage off Yavimaya Coast. Blast Zone might be okay to keep still. And then put Coast in play. And I could Fading Hope the Anointer. Not necessary, to be fair. We could wait. And then play Stomper. And that's gonna cost me one life. And get a forest. And then we still have Fading Hope available. And then next turn we're enabling Stomper by playing our 7th land. Puppeteer might be something we want to bounce eventually. So do we want to bounce it now is a question. Could wait and then next turn play Tatiova, play Kicked Exploration. Should still be able to Fading Hope. Reality chip's not bad either. Animate Yavimaya Coast. And these two get to attack. And then we could make a surprise 3 3 with exploration to maybe ambush the Anointer. Another puppeteer. Do they have a consider left to enable their entire team? They do. That's a good one. So, yeah, they get to drain us. And then Anointer gets a plus one counter as well. Might want to bounce the Anointer, which blocks our 3 3 flyers. But I'm gonna exploration first, and then maybe keep an island on top. To still fading hope. Titania's command's exciting. And then fetch lands, good too with Tatiova. Problem is if we keep hideout, of course we're gonna shuffle away command. But uh yeah. Still happy with the fetch line, I think. Then we have reality chip as another way to gain card advantage. There's another one. So if I bounce Anointer, we're hitting for a decent amount. Can play Reality Chip first and keep Plaza on tap to maybe protect Tatiova. Didn't think I'll need Blast soon. Land on top, so if we reconfigure, that's another 3-3 three, three potentially. Sure. Fading Hope Anointer. And then land on top seems fine. Attack, and our opponent concedes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and seems fine. Early ramp with joint exploration, and then... 
Titanius Command as our curve topper. Hopefully find something else along the way. A reality chip we can play. And another exploration on top. So we're gonna see a lot of fresh cards here in the next few turns. Opponent Red Black with a bitter reunion, so maybe a reanimator strategy. Undying Malice discarded. Okay, so we'll pass. Probably don't need to keep Fading Hope on top, but we can wait and see what the opponent does next, and then decide with our Scry. Alright, Dragon Engine, I guess we wouldn't mind bouncing. So I'll keep the Fading Hope. And that many journeys doesn't seem all that great anymore. So another Titanius Command on top. Probably would rather find more lands, so we'll bounce Engine now. And then I can scry that to the bottom. Stompers a little bit better. And a Tatiova will shuffle away with Stomper here. Get a forest. Okay. So next turn can play Kicked Exploration once again. And then maybe Stomper gets to attack. Opponent can replay Engine, give it haste by sacrificing Bitter Reunion. But they're gonna hang on to it. Now we also have the option of reconfiguring Reality Chip to play a land off the top for free. So let's try it. For one mana, they could still have a cut down on Reality Chip. Stomper should be safe. Voltage Surge, never mind. I guess if they sacrifice the Dragon Engine that works. It's a bit of a setback. So now it's probably fine to shuffle away the land. And then... We may or may not want to cast a Joint Exploration here. Probably fine to do so. Another Dragon Engine. And then another Stomper will keep. Probably don't need to keep the lands to go with it. And Awaken the Woods, a nice one too. Back up Reality Chip. We can shuffle away with Stomper. Or we could just go for Titanius Command and get two lands with it as well. Alongside maybe two Bear Tokens. Don't hate that idea. And then we can get Argoth alongside Blast Zone, I think. Okay, so we're developing our mana. At some point, we can reconfigure Reality Chip to play more stuff off the top. And there's Mishra. Uh oh. Opponent gives it haste with Bitter Reunion, so they can meld. And I don't think we're beating a melded Mishra. But we'll see here. So we have to discard two cards. Awaken the Woods is not very good in the face of Mishra, so I guess we'll keep Joint Exploration. And then we need to find an answer. Fading Hope will do. So let's go digging. Don't know if we need to play it kicked anymore. Jingataxius a little bit late to the party. That's not going to save us. Tatiova also a bit late. So yeah, I think we're dead now. Play Tatiova into Stomper, animate a land. But uh, yeah, Mishra is going to be a bit too much for us to overcome. So yeah, Bitter Reunion, a nice haste enabler. I will hang back with everyone, but I doubt we can survive. Brotherhood's ends to wipe the board as well. Alright, good game. Oh, 
on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems fine. Many journeys into Stomper, ramping towards Jin, facing a green aggro deck. So, sure we can hang on to Cascade. So we can maybe play Fading Hope next turn after putting Cascade in play with many journeys, should we draw it. Turn to Loom Speaker. It's our opponent off to a nice start. It's gonna take us a second to get uh, Stompers online. And the uh, opponent's probably not playing too many instants and sorceries that Jin can counter. So not the best matchup for it. Opponent with a Gala Greeter, so yeah, that's a lot of pressure. Reality chip, go for blocker, not the most exciting. I think we prefer Stomper still. And then keep the coast untapped to represent more instants and get an island. And then hope to draw land next turn so we can either command or play a Stomper and have them both be able to attack and block. Opponent moves to combat. We'll take it. So no creatures in their first main phase to enable Beast Caller. So they may have a bunch of 5 drops in hand for all we know. And we did draw land, so that's good. So Titania's command is an option. Make bears add counters to the team. Or we can search up lands to enable Stomper. Or we can simply play Stomper, play Reality Chip, and then next turn Titanius Command, which I kind of prefer. And then we get to hit for 4 as well. Possible our opponent has some instant speed fight spell here. In which case, uh, Jin could still come in handy after all. Instead of playing Reality Chip, I could also level a Blast Zone, which would be pretty effective on X equals 2. So maybe we'll try that instead. Another Pack Leader. So we can already blow a Blast Zone to kill both Pack Leaders if we'd like. And there's a tail swipe. Fair enough. So, depending on how the rest of the turn goes, we'll either activate Blast Zone or level it up. Is this another tail swipe? So that will result in a trade from the Beast Caller. They can move the plus one counters elsewhere. And goes for Pack Leader, so Blast Zone looks good now. So no need to level a Blast Zone even more. Could just play Jin as well, which is tempting, and then double Titania's command. And at 12 we shouldn't be in any danger of dying next turn at least. Pass it back. And then double Titania's command. Should be pretty sweet, although a Defiler Vigor could be scary if they have some one drop left in hand to add counters everywhere. Five four attacks, we'll take it. Okay, so double Titania's commands. Can even play a reality chip first, although then we don't get to double it with Jin, so we have to be careful. So yeah, let's cast the uh, command first. And then I have to imagine bears and plus one counters is the way to go. And then now we can play reality chip. And another gen coming up. Can we start attacking points at 16? So this would present lethal, so sure. Opponent trumps falls to 9. And yeah, they'll need a pretty impressive turn with Defiler to present lethal. But I guess not impossible. A Loam Speaker. 
counters on the team. One card left and another loam speaker. So attack all and cross your fingers, I guess, if you're the opponent. I think we're still good to survive. Next turn, reconfigure reality chip. Could also blow a blast zone, killing both pack leaders. So I don't think uh, we're in any danger here. So yeah, activate blast zone. Opponent's got three blockers and they seem very dead. All right, sweet. So we got to see our blue-green ramp deck in action. And yeah, the synergy between Tatiova and Awaken the Woods is a pretty fun one. And getting to double it up with Jingataxius on top of that is even better. So probably not the most competitive standard deck out there since it takes a while for the deck to get going. I imagine we're going to be unfavored against most aggressive strategies, especially a card like Thalia can be quite disruptive when played early, and then we're not packing a whole lot of interaction ourselves, so we're really hoping to have a quick start to get those powerful synergies online. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.